Hello everybody, this is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com and host for Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Media on RBN Network. While everybody is focused on Hillary Clinton's little fainting spell or collapsing spell, there is information that I have noticed that is not getting out to the public. There has been some information about OPM and congressional uh, on the Oversight Committee and I'm going to show you this is oversighthouse.gov and this is a report that has come out. So we're going to go over this a little bit so that we can actually get the real news out to the people as mainstream media worries about a collapsing spell. Is this a diversionary tactic? I would say yes. The OPM data breach, how the government jeopardized our national security for more than a generation. This was published on September the 7th of 2016, only a couple of days ago. So as this is being put out there approximately four days ago, everybody is focused on the bickering and the uh, sideshow that is going on with Hillary Clinton. The House Oversight and Government Reform Chairman Jason Chavez, Republican of Utah, released a staff report titled The OPM Data Breach, How the Government Jeopardized Our National Security for More Than a Generation, chronicling the committee's year-long investigation into how highly personal, highly sensitive data of millions of Americans was compromised by a foreign adversary in 2015. The report outlines findings and recommendations to help the federal government better acquire, deploy, maintain, and monitor its information and technology. As a result, one of the committee's findings, Chairman Chavez sent a letter to the Government Accountability Office, or the GAO, requesting an opinion on whether the Office of Personnel Management, or OPM, violated the Anti-Deficiency Act, or the ADA, when it accepted services from a company without payment. Key findings and recommendations and an excerpt from the letter are below. Key findings. The OPM data breach was preventable. OPM leadership failed to heed repeated recommendations from its Inspector General failed to sufficiently respond to growing threats of sophisticated cyber attacks and failed to prioritize resources for cybersecurity. Data breaches in 2014 were likely connected and possibly coordinated to the 2015 data breach. OPM misled the public on the extent of the damage of the breach and made false statements to Congress. False statements to Congress, I would consider that perjury. Key recommendations are reprioritize federal information security efforts towards zero trust, ensure agency CIOs are empowered, accountable, and competent, reduce the use of social security numbers by federal agencies, modernize existing legacy federal information technology assets, improve federal recruitment, training, and retention of federal cybersecurity specialists, letter to the GAO. Quote, in brief, we believe OPM violated the ADA when the agency retained and deployed SciTech software following a product demonstration and never paid, unquote. A timeline of the breaches can be found here. So we're going to click on to the timeline of the breaches. Of course, as always, I will leave links in the description box below. Please help get this information out. This is detrimental to the American people. Your personal information is being breached. In July of 2012, first known adversarial access to OPM's network based on malware was found in 2015. Late 2013, November, first evidence of adversarial activity association was stolen technical documentation. December of 2013, first evidence of adversarial activity associated with background investigation and personnel records data breach. 
The activity was not identified until April of 2015, two years later. March of 2014, OPM notified of data breach identified by a third party. While OPM responds to this notice and monitors adversarial activity targeting background investigation data, adversary exfiltrates documents related to the OPM systems holding background investigation data. Witnesses involved in the 2014 and 15 incident response efforts said the material exfiltrated would give an attacker targeting the background investigation data an advantage because, quote, it gives them more familiarity with how the systems are architected. Potentially, some of the documents may contain accounts, account names, or machine names, or IPT addresses that are relevant to these critical systems. In May of 2014, Adversary associated with exfiltrating background investigation data established a foothold on OPM's network using OPM credentials for background investigation contractor. May 27, 2014, OPM successfully executes a plan to expel the attacker they began monitoring in March, but is unaware of and does not eliminate the May 7 foothold. In June of 2014, Adversary conducts a remote desktop protocol session con contacting important and sensitive servers supporting background investigation processes, indicating escalated access and ability to move through OPM's network. Adversary likely first had access to OPM's mainframe. July through August of 2014, after moving throughout OPM's network and obtaining elevated access credentials, the adversary successfully exfiltrates the background investigation data from OPM's network. July of 2014, OPM acknowledges in response to press reports material was exfiltrated in 2014 but does not identify this material as related to background investigation systems and states no personally identifiable information exfiltrated. December of 2014, after moving throughout OPM's network to the Department of Interior's data center holding OPM data, adversary exfiltrates personal records data. March of 2015, fingerprint data appears to have been exfiltrated on or around this date. This is one of the reasons it is so important. And, and I just want to make a comment. Unless you're a criminal, you should not have to be <laughs> fingerprinted. And this is one of the reasons I am against fingerprinting, uh, whether it be for, uh, let's say, a CCW. I am against that. Why? Because you're not a criminal. You haven't been convicted of a crime. You haven't been charged with a crime. You should not have to give up your personally identifiable information as fingerprints. If somebody gets a hold of a fingerprint and they have a lot of really smart criminals out there, then they could actually set somebody up, and that is a concern. After being alerted in April of 15th of 2015 by an OPM contractor working for OPM's IT Security Operations Group, OPM notifies U.S. CERT about suspicious network traffic, traffic related to opmsecurity.org. This domain was registered to Steve Rogers, also known as Captain America, in April of 2014, and the last beaconing activity occurred in March of 2015. April the 22nd of 2015. Then CIO Seymour testifies before the Committee on Cybersecurity and publicly discusses the data breach of the materials exfiltrated in spring of 2014 related to background investigation systems, saying, so in this case, potentially our antiquated technologies may have us a little bit. So if you notice, this is about 
background investigation systems. What do they use background investigation systems for? How about background checks for the purchases of firearms? That's right. This is completely infiltrated, has been hacked, is a huge problem, and have not put this information out to the American people. So while they're requiring these quote-unquote background checks, which is proven, not only do they not stop crime, the only reason to do so would be to gather data on the American people, which obviously they cannot even keep confidential and safe. April 23rd of 2015, OPM determines there was a major incident regarding the exfiltration of personal records, which triggers a requirement to notify Congress. Congress was notified on April the 30th. May the 20th of 2015, OPM determines there was a major incident regarding the exfiltration of background investigation data which triggers a requirement to notify Congress, and Congress was notified on May the 27th. In June of 2015, June 4th, OPM releases public notice that personal records of 4.2 million current and former federal employees had been compromised. The committee holds first of two hearings on the OPM data breaches and on July the 9th of 2015, OPM releases public notice that background investigation data of over 20 million former and current federal employees and contractors had been compromised. So this is another thing I want, this is not just a problem for your average person that is a citizen of the United States or a citizen of the United States of America. This is also a problem for the individuals who work within the federal government as well. And although they are targeting uh, what appears to be the federal employees, the question remains, that the background information that they are speaking about, whether it be, like I said before, for background checks on quote unquote, uh, to be able to purchase a weapon, if that goes into the federal database, then wouldn't it make sense that this would also affect individuals who have had to go through that background check? So. We do not know uh, 100% whether it has or has not infiltrated the um, personal files of individuals who have done background checks, which have been proven to do nothing whatsoever to uh, stop violence. And it is only a list so that they can eventually have a list of gun owners in order to confiscate. And there's other issues, you know, that can go along with that. But I think that that point is something that needs to be made. This is a letter from the Congress of the United States. And this right here was dated September the 7th, 2016. We are writing to call your attention to an apparent Anti-Deficiency Act violation by the U.S. Office of Personnel Management or OPM. We request that you render an opinion regarding whether OPM violated the ADA when the agency accepted services from a company, SciTech Services LLC, without payment and take additional action as appropriate. The relevant act section of the ADA states, an officer or employee of the United States government or the District of Columbia government may not accept voluntary services for either government or employee personal services exceeding that authorized by law except for emergencies involving the safety of human life 
for the protection of property. In brief, we believe OPM violated the ADA when the agency retained and deployed SciTex software following a product demonstration and never paid. On April 21, 2015, SciTex demonstrated its Cypher tool at OPM's headquarters in Washington, D.C. Following the demonstration, OPM staff represented they intended to purchase licenses to deploy SciTex software in various places throughout the agency. The next day, SciTech, relying on the government's verbal request, began expanding the scope of the software services that were installed for the demonstration and provided license to OPM for 1,000 endpoints that expired on June 30, 2015. During the period in question, SciTech personnel also provided incident response services to OPM and installed related hardware. Documents and testimony obtained by the committee show OPM retrained SciTech's equipment for months after the demonstration and used at least some of the software licenses. The document's testimony also show OPM never paid SciTech for these services. The facts are described in greater detail in the enclosed committee report, the OPM data breach, how the government jeopardized our national security for more than a generation. Chapter 5 of the report contains the findings that form the basis of this referral. And of course, this is a letter from Jason Chavez, the chairman, and um, it was carbon copied to Elijah Cummings, the ranking member as well. And this was sent to Mr. Dodaro. And right here, would be the report, Committee on Oversight and Government Reform, U.S. House of Representatives, 114th Congress. To the Federal Chief Information Officers, in the advent of information age presents a paradigm shift about how our federal institutions collect, store, distribute, and protect information. The data breach at the U.S. Office of Personnel Management, OPM, is defining moment, and it is up to you, the community of Federal Chief Information Officers, to determine how the country will respond. The effectiveness of our country's response depends on your answers to this question. Can you as the CIO be trusted with highly personal, highly sensitive data on millions of Americans? Federal CIOs possess expertise and technical knowledge that support the mission-related activities of their agency. As a departmental heads focus on managing the bureaucracy of the executive branch, substantial challenges of their agency's mission and Congress, CIOs play a critical role in keeping technology working for Americans and in furtherance of the agency's mission. Federal CIOs matter. In fact, your work has never been more important and the margin for error has never been smaller. As we continue to confront the ongoing challenges of modernizing antiquated systems, CIOs must remain consistently vigilant to protect the information of hundreds of millions of Americans in an environment where a single vulnerability is all a sophisticated actor needs to steal information, identities, and profoundly damage our national security. The mission of our committee is to ensure the efficiency, effectiveness, and accountability of the federal government and its agencies. We have a constitutional duty to provide meaningful oversight of the executive branch and to recommend reforms that are informed by our investigative findings. Taxpayers also rely on the committee to bring a measure of accountability and transparency in cases where there is evidence of misconduct. That is why I'm releasing this report to the American public for those whose personal information was compromised. I hope this report provides some answers on how and why most of all, however, it is my hope that findings and recommendations contained herein will inform and motivate current and future CIOs and agency heads so we, as a government, can be smart about the way we acquire, deploy, maintain, and monitor our information technology. The OPM data breach and resulting general national security consequences cannot happen again. It is up to leaders like you and Congress to ensure that it does not happen again. Sincerely, Jason Chavez, Chairman. 
So as I was saying when I was referring back to uh, the background checks, it is obvious by the way that this thing is worded. It is not just federal employees who uh, have been briefed any kind of background information that they may have on the American public is clearly at risk. So I wanted to share this information with you. Thank you. God bless you. Get your reports. Read them. As always, watch your backs. Check your facts. And make sure when the mainstream media is trying to have you focus one way, always look the opposite. Semper Fi Dallas and have a great day.